following this word from your local stations. Its name is a ghost town once again. 53 mushers have come and gone, including Bert Baumhoff, who collected $2,000 in silver for being first at the halfway point. The teams are now making the 328-mile journey across the Alaskan interior, up to frozen Yukon and over to Unalakleet on the Bering Sea. The Yukon, wide and smooth, provides the perfect training ground for many young mushers who live along the river's banks. And right now, the Iditarod is undergoing a youth movement. 28-year-old Libby Riddles has taken over first place. And just two hours behind her, teenager Tim Osmar is staying close to the lead. Both Riddles and Osmar are driving experienced dog teams. Libby has many of Joe Garney's from last year, while Tim is using the dogs that pulled his father, Dean, to victory. The elder Osmar stepped out of the limelight to allow his eager son to finally run the Iditarod. Tim has been wanting to do this race for years. In fact, he wanted to do it the last two years when he was 16 and 17, and they wouldn't let him, so we just both knew that as soon as he was old enough that he'd be doing it. Dean and Tim mapped out the future. Hit the beaches to train, and father taught son about the relationship between dog and musher. Without them, I wouldn't be here. Without me, they probably wouldn't be here either, so we got to take care of each other. Or else it wouldn't work, you know. I'm musher just part of the team. Joe Garney handed his team over to girlfriend Libby Riddles for this year's race, and she's not at all surprised at how well she and the team are doing. I'm not really too surprised because the team came in third place last year, and it's a team of half of my best dogs and half of his best dogs. Tim won three straight junior Iditarods, but now follows Dad's footsteps on the big trail. In order to win something, you gotta think you can, you gotta know you can. It would be special for me to win the year after my father won, and I think I can do it. I just know now that it's gonna be a very hard thing to do. For Libby Riddles, it would be history if she won. However, she carries no torch for the women's movement. I can't really say that having, you know, being a woman has that much to do with it. Just as a personal goal, I look at it just like anybody else, I'd be thrilled to death. She sold for her hats to raise the money to race this year, making first place a very special place to be. Here you are in the Iditarod race and you're first one out, you're in the number one spot. It's the first time I've been first in the Iditarod. And, you know, I've been in the front before, but it feels pretty good being first. In 1983, Rick Mackey finished first and accomplished what Tim Osmar is trying to do, win the race as his father before him had done. Dick Mackey won it in 1978. Right now, the leading foreigner is Jacques Philippe of France. While he is running competitively, his wife Claire and her friend Monique Benet are getting a different picture of the race from the back of the pack. They're not competing against others, just themselves. Their victory will be in finishing, not winning, because they know they're out of their element. They have trained for the race in the forest of France, and all that it is beautiful, it is nothing compared to the vastness that is Alaska. Monique, why do you run the Iditarod race? The, if the real way to know Alaska is by, by sled dogs, because sled dogs are the picture of Alaska. And uh, I take this race this year uh, as a beautiful walk and discovery. Meanwhile, up front, Libby Riddles has lost her lead during a stop to feed her dogs. While the team is feasting on seal, beaver, fish, and steak, Libby is surviving on what can only be described as your basic all-American junk food diet. What else you got here? Colonel Sanders. Ooh, this is good stuff too. Okay. Pizza. I was so mean when I was making my airdrops. I ordered two large pizzas and then had them stick them out in the backyard and freeze them. <laughs> On the trail, Levon Barve, the musher who pulled out ahead of Libby, is traveling through sacred Indian land called Old Woman Pass. It is one of the most beautiful sections of the trail, and with everyone behind him and only Eula Cleet in front, Levon can relax and enjoy the scenery as he rides off into the sunset. Come on, America, save on Firestone 721 radios and more during the Driver's Choice Sale. America's driving to Save 10 to 25% on steel belted radios featuring our famous bestseller, the 721. Choose Firestone radios for light trucks. Even save on our popular S211 for imports. Or get Mastercare 8-point brake service. Now just $59.95 from America's number one brake specialist. Choose Firestone today. Firestone. 
tornado broke this window and four other windows in these two cars. I've never been through anything like that in my life. Allstate Update. Fast, fair claim service. Monday morning, we called Allstate. And when I came home from work Monday afternoon, they had people in the driveway repairing our car windows. I was amazed they could get here as fast as they did. Uh, we've got a lot of damage in this neighborhood. If you're ever in a tornado like we've been through, you want to be in good hands with Allstate. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. The ominous Bering Sea provides the backdrop for the final leg of the Iditarod. The teams leave Unilakleet and wind the final 269 miles up the windswept coast to the finish line in Nome. Before daybreak, Libby Riddles is up and trying to get a head start on the other mushers. Those guys always say they can catch you, but, you know, sometimes they don't. I'm taking a chance going out this morning in this kind of weather. It might uh, be kind of tough on my leaders and stuff, but right now I'm at the point where i got to either take a chance or to heck with it, you know. Got to do it. Get up! Get up! Get up! Come on, get up there! All right! All right! And as she is pulling out, the master tactician, Rick Swenson, is pulling in, not the least bit concerned with her departure. I was really surprised to get here and... Uh find out that everybody wasn't gone. I'm not afraid of anybody getting away from me. I'm afraid of somebody catching me because of the weather. So as Swenson rest, a host of others make their way out onto the coastal tundra. Experienced mushers like John Cooper and Dewey Halverson have pulled out of Unilacleet early in pursuit of Libby Riddles. Even the Yukon River Fox, Emmett Peters, has decided to make a run for the front. By early afternoon, everyone is asking just one question. KL7 TK calling KL7 Alpha Alpha, KL7 Alpha Alpha, KL7 TK. Uh, we're calling to request the uh, status of uh, the Marsha Rick Swenson. I wonder if you could fill us in on that, please. Roger, I show team number 13, Rick Swenson, out of this checkpoint. Approximately four hours and 25 minutes behind the leader, team number 46, uh, uh, Libby Riddles, uh, over. At three in the afternoon, Swenson is back on the trail, but he has his work cut out for him as there are eight mushers ahead of him, and the leader, Libby Riddles, has opened up a six-hour lead. But that advantage is in jeopardy as Riddles pulls into the village of Shaktulik. Increasing coastal winds are causing ground blizzards. The surface snow is blowing at upwards of 40 miles per hour and visibility is dropping. After consulting with partner Joe Garney, Libby decides to take a chance and heads out into the storm. She is hoping to put the worst of the storm between her and the competition. Meantime, 300 miles up the coast, Nome is getting into the swing of the Iditarod. But I guess that's just par for the course. How about a big hand and a big cheer out there for all the mushers on the Iditarod Trail, huh? Everybody's having a party, but not the mushers. I did, I did, I did the Iditarod Trail. Come on! Libby spent the night camped out on the trail, and by morning her game plan had paid off. The brunt of the bad weather had passed her by, and with visibility improving, she can easily follow the trail. Just 20 miles behind her, though, it's a different story, as John Cooper and Dewey Halverson are stopped dead in their tracks. The ground storm has iced over the fur around their dog's eyes. The leaders can't see and don't particularly care to run headstrong into the wind. The first half of this is just horrible. Also in the storm is Rick Swenson. He has moved into fourth place, but is still losing time to Libby Riddles. She has just arrived in Koyuk in good condition, 24 hours after making her dramatic nighttime run into the heart of the storm. When it got dark, I had lots of trouble seeing the trail. Just what made it so bad is that it was kind of wet snow and uh, the wind. And I kept kicking myself in the butt and saying it was the stupidest thing I ever done, but I didn't think about turning back. And by the next morning, it was clear to everyone that Libby would be a tough riddle to solve. Jim Brewer with you on KICY's Breakfast Show. We're going to send this song out to Dwayne Halverson and John Cooper chasing after Libby Riddles on the Iditarod Trail. Last year, car made... 
final hours, exhaustion, fatigue, and despair have conquered many of the mushers. But at White Mountain, a refreshed Libby Riddle is preparing herself and her team for the stretch run to Nome. Last haul, guys. Bye, you guys. Sirloin steak and a box of dog biscuits each. Get up, dogs. You ain't tired of the spirit of this race. You can set this trail on fire. You were born to the race. Your dogs are just the same. You were made for the winner's circle. It runs inside your veins. Five hours back, Cooper and Halverson are still giving chase. They're working together, desperately trying to gain ground. But behind them, pre-race favorite Rick Swenson has conceded. Well, I lost the trail right at dark. There's a section there where it must have been some overflow came in or the wind blew all the snow away or something. And uh, I guess that pretty well blew my chances of winning. That's the way it goes. As dawn breaks on day 18, Libby Riddles can see history on the horizon. Dewey Halverson has made up three and a half hours, but is still two hours behind. And John Cooper has settled comfortably into third. And down the trail at the finish line in Nome, the wake-up call has gone out early. And at 6 a.m., the streets are filled with people waiting to welcome Alaska's new first lady. With nine miles to go, there are no more questions, only answers. Libby Riddles will be the first woman ever to win the Iditarod. Despite a courageous dash from White Mountain, Dewey Halverson will have to settle for second. At the finish line, mushing legends are gathering for the grand finale. Last year's winner, Dean Osmar, Joe Reddington Sr., who was forced to scratch from this year's race, and Libby's boyfriend, Joe Garney, are all gathered to share in her momentous trip down Front Street. 